Hi everybody! Hi Hello. Benji! Welcome Benji Cook! Hello! To a new Harry Potter video. I want to trash Hogwarts again <laughs> as the source of all the problems in the world, in general, in the wizarding world in particular. You are a huge Harry Potter fan. Huge. And huge. Harry Potter, your take is that the source of all the problems could be traced to the segregation in Hogwarts. Yes, it's a, it's a big problem. It's a big Please problem. explain. It takes away a huge chunk of freedom from people, and mainly that's the freedom to change. They decide who you are based on who you are when you're 10, 11, yep. whatever. Yep, yep. Plenty of courage, I see. Not a bad mind either. There's talent, oh yes, and a thirst to prove yourself. We kind of know that most of your close friends will yes. be from the house. Yes, definitely. And we kind of know that, as we know from our world, and especially I think in a small, wiz in a small world like the Wizarding World in Great Britain, um, your, your friends will determine your outlook on life, they'll determine your politics, but they'll also determine, for example, your career. They sort you into four houses. So if we think for a second about the effects that it has on the whole society, just remember that basically every witch or wizard we know from the stories yes. that originates in uh, Britain went to Hogwarts. And also I would say that this segregation uh, accentuates certain aspects of your personality. So let's say you are ambitious. Okay, but when you take all the ambitious people and you put them together, right. and you tell them it's incredible that you are ambitious. This is what you are ambitious. That's right. And now you have to beat all these other houses, lesser houses, you are the best house, then you become more and more ambitious, and then you become a psychopath. And that's uh, very, very dangerous and, for society. And obviously, Slytherin is the most extreme example following the story in Harry Potter. But I think it's more than that. It's, it's, it's also, it's marking the other three houses as the other. And right. so even if you're Slytherin and you don't grow up to be Voldemort, um, when you're 40, how do you view a Gryffindor? Vengeance is sweet. High hopes I'd be the one to catch you. Severus. I told Dumbledore you were helping an old friend into the castle, and now, here's the proof. Brilliant, Snape. Once again, you put your keen and penetrating mind to the task, and as usual, come to the wrong conclusion. I think it's a problem for all, all the uh, houses, because it encourages, like you said, groupthink, and it really enhances whatever that one trait of that house is. It really increases that and makes you feel that that trait has the most value, right. and people who don't have that trait, who have other traits, have less value. Right. So, I mean, Ravenclaw, it's, it's good, being smart is good, whip beyond measure is man's greatest treasure, for sure. But, um, <laughs> but you also when, have to be good when, when, kind. When you take that to the extreme, you can become very isolated from society. And we see this in a uh, founder of Ravenclaw House, Rowena Ravenclaw, okay. towards the final, in the final book. You have to convince her uh, that Voldemort needs to be defeated and she needs to help with that. But, and it's a really hard sell for Harry and his friends to do that because she's so intelligent but she's so disconnected from her emotions because all she's left is intelligence. So you can look either at the founders of the houses or at individual ca characters that we know from the book and you can see with Gryffindor it leads to maybe self-righteousness, it leads to maybe carelessness. Pride. Pride, sure. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, uh, for Hufflepuff? Hufflepuff. Uh, the stoners of. Uh, <laughs> Are they the stoners? Well, first of all, they're called Hufflepuff, and their common room is oh. by the kitchens. I, I don't need any more poof. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never thought of it. Hey, I can see through my leg hole. Hey, nice, Slice, nice. look out, look out, tree, 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 tree. <laughs> it, it, it's similar to somehow, in a lot of ways, we teach kids science today. We split all the kids into kids who are good at science inherently and kids who are bad at science or math. And, we, and, we, and it's created these tropes that girls can't do math, for example. Right. Um, so Hufflepuffs can't do math. We know now that this is not a good yes, policy, exactly. education policy. Exactly. To tell people you are this. This also goes, so we're talking, we started by, by calling it segregation. So we can come cl edge closer a little bit to sure. the historical segregation. But we're not there yet. Let's say, okay, there has been this problem in American sports. Let's say basketball. Sure. If you're an American white guy, you play basketball, they tell you, okay, I'm generalizing. 
you you're supposed to be smart so you use your use those skills and if you're an american black guy say you're supposed to be athletic so use those skills i only have four words for you white men can jump jackson 15 of his 17 of the second half oh. almost stolen back to porzingis ahí tiene a gasol con ganas de jugársela and then you can see that uh, white europeans who have the same genetic makeup as white Americans, they don't have this hang-up that they can't be athletic or that's supposed to be this or that. Right. In this case, modern society is the sorting hat, um, which, as you say, America and Europe have different sorting hats. Right. You know, this whole process Slytherin. of getting your brain scanned Hufflepuff. by this machine Gryffindor. and having that machine issue a binary answer as to who are you, Gryffindor. it's not only intrusive and should be unconstitutional, it's downright violent. But if we go further back uh, in the past, segregation, you know, separate but equal, who decides which house? Absolutely, it, I think that... This because just Dumbledore, he clearly favors uh, Gryffindor over the other houses. I might have a few last minute points to award. 50 points, 50 points, 60 points, 10 points. It looks to me like a rigged election. Well, first of all, Dumbledore is a Gryffindor. We're gonna beat the rig system. Don't attack me if that's wrong. I'm like 99% that's true. No. It slips out once, but like... That's like culpa. nepotism, nepotism, like you're for your own but it's, alumni. But, but, but I think you're alumnus. pointing exactly at the problem. He can't help it. He's a Gryffindor. He was raised that way too. He's not immune to, to, to that. How could you have gone through this experience right. and not feel that way towards the Gryffindor students. Like, like all the high-level politicians and leaders in this society right. have their minds uh, 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 constructed, their thoughts, thought process constructed in such a way that they have to look at their society as divided from the get-go. That's right. So Harry, he had a, had a decision to make. Where to put you? Not Slytherin. Not Slytherin. Slytherin will help you on the way to greatness. There's no doubt about that. No? Please. Well, if you're sure, better be Gryffindor! So it's like on a spectrum, right? You're not this or that. A right, absolutely. We, we know from Howie's experience with the Sorting Hat that he was given a choice. And we also hear later in the books about Hermione. Uh, she, she hints that she was also given a choice. To Ravenclaw, right. To, for, for Ravenclaw, but in the books there's this inner monologue that only Howie hears, and we're seeing the, the movie from Howie Potter's view. But maybe everyone goes through this in type of inner monologue, that's always how I felt about it. Okay, so let's say, <laughs> five years later, Harry wants, wants to be more Slytherini, yes. or something like that. He can't change his mind, so the, the decision that he made at that very point is what determined his, his entire life. It's, it's even worse than that. Chamber of Secrets, if you look at, 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 that, at the second book, is Howie trying to reconcile his Slytherin sides. Now, because of magic and Voldemort and all that, he has Slytherin sides, but it's really a way to, to showcase exactly what you're saying. He feels guilt that he has these Slytherin feelings. Right. Now, the whole school's gonna think you're his great, great, great grandson or something. But I'm not. That creates emotional burden. That... Yes. It can't be. On young children, totally. impressionable children. Absolutely. It's, no, don't send your crazy. kids there. I mean, you, you're going to spend most of your time there as a young adult right. in the wizarding world. You can't escape. I mean, if you hate Hogwarts, no. you have a real problem. You can be a bum on the street yep. or something. You won't have a job, nothing. Yep. Yep. We're here in Israel. We have a kind of segregated education system, not segregated in the way that the American system was, but a little bit Hogwartsy. We have like four separate education sy systems here. Right. We have like the secular, not secular, whatever, the establishment right. the state. one, the state one. We have the ultra orthodox one. Yes. We have the nationalist religious one. Yes. And we have the Israeli, Arab, Palestinian uh, yes. citizens of Israel. Yes. Four separate uh, education systems. We don't have like core education uh, values right. for everybody. No. 
And basically, you are put in one of those four houses yes. when you are a child. Yeah. And then, you ha and then it's very difficult to change along the way from one house to another because your life trajectory is already set. That's right. You'd have to s flip, switch out all your friends. You'd have to switch out everything you thought you learned. If I was yanked out of state school, knowing math and science, and then put into yeshiva school and not knowing what one rabbi said to the other 100 years ago, I would have, been, I would have would ruined my life. Getting back to Harry Potter here for a second, Howie's feelings of guilt over that. It's smart to go back to Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Harry's feelings of guilt. Um, wh wh why should people need to deal with this? Right. And maybe he could have gotten along with Malfoy if, if there weren't these houses. Like, basically, you're taking uh, uh, a desire for excellence and by putting them all together and, and, and accentuating that, basically you're radicalizing them and making them into racists and bigots. Absolutely. There are a lot of ways to do this. First of all, what happens if you saw it every year? Boom. Boom. What do you think? <laughs> Very good. Right? If, if people will flip, they'll, people won't flip. There'll be a natural move of things. I, I don't want to disinherit, but... But maybe you will want to stay with your friends. Also, okay. just, just a, a point for earlier, if we take it like to the most mundane stuff, so yeah. I used to play all the time basketball three, four times a week. Right. And every time you play with different people on different, on, on different teams. And then for some time, people wanted to try the same teams for a long time. What, and you could and see happened? the animosity growing between go. the teams. And we said, no, we have, to, we have to break things up because we're not getting along anymore. Yeah. Because we're always competing the same people against the same people. How I started thinking about this issue is that, and I think this is common to everyone who's read Harry Potter or seen the movies, okay. is that you start wondering, hmm, what house would I be in? Okay. Well, That's like uh, the quiz, most popular Harry Potter quiz ever. Yeah, totally. Um, and you were like, first, first... I was a Ravenclaw. That was the first thing that came, came to your mind? Yeah, I was a Ravenclaw. And then For I me, was, it was like, I was like Gryffindor before I did the test. Oh, interesting. Then I came out Hufflepuff. <laughs> That's funny. So... I think it, it also gets to a, a, a halt that's a real problem at Hogwarts and also in the larger wizarding world. This is a system that's a thousand years old. Okay. What does it mean about a society that doesn't say anything that's a thousand years old? Just question it a bit. Right. Let's think about it. it. Let's rethink it. Maybe it's a good decision, but right. yeah. And, and we see the wizarding world's lack of wanting to progress in any way is the cause of, is basically its original sin and the cause of all its. Uh, problems, and you see that especially in the period that we see in Harry Potter, where because they were unwilling to progress after the first time Voldemort came back, the parents of Harry Potter and his friends' generation, that time period, the first Order of the Phoenix, right. um, if there had been real progress and real acknowledgement of the Muggleborn issue within wizarding society, Voldemort would have no followers to return to. Right. Or it would have been one guy and it would have been a lot less big of a deal. But you really see, and this is shown obviously the most in Order of the Phoenix, how it enabled this rise of, a, of these collaborators with Voldemort and this kind of central conservative group that just deny uh, that the problem even exists. And, and that causes it to fester and fester and fester. So I, I see the sorting and, and a lot of things in Hogwarts as, well, we've always done it this way as why there are so many problems in wizarding society, why there's so many dark arts, why Voldemort rises. And obviously since she has said that the wizarding world mirrors our real world, right. so this is, this is a, a criticism on conservative thinking that if something has been done for a long time, then inher it's inherently a good thing. First of all, change is a good thing. We're supposed to change as we grow up, as we adopt new views, as we're exposed to new experiences. If we don't change, we're, we're going back to that problem with this problem of conservatism. Um, you know, so I, like personally, just like from collaborating so much on, on, on this channel, right. all the time collaborating and thinking teamwork, 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 I find that I am way less competitive than I used to. I'm like w way less inclined to crush other people in basketball. Interesting, interesting. It, it, it's more about enjoying the shared experience together. Exactly. And just win-win. Everybody wins. Right. Maybe the world would be that way if there were no Slytherins. <laughs> so let's just kill all the Slytherins. <laughs>
Or did I just go you too see, far? You see, you, ah! see, you see where it takes us? <laughs> if after the second uh, death of Voldemort, they are not teaching uh, at Hogwarts uh, what makes a good wizard in a good wizarding community, then they're gonna have this problem again. And I think, I'm thinking that they're going to have this problem again because they want to make plays and write more books and stories so, so they can't resolve the problem. Uh, no, of course, but... but cha -ching. It, it. <laughs> Segregation is how they operate not only with human wizards. The goblins are an underclass. Boom. The house elves are slaves. The giants. The centaurs just stay in your forest and don't right. bother us. Right. It's, it's how they handle problem. every issue. Muggles, That's yeah, right. over there, let's just tell them. Okay, you marry the muggle, okay, but there's no mixing. That's right. That's why uh, Hermione's uh, foundation for the betterment of elf kind sure. is really the most radical thing in Harry Potter. Because uh, other than maybe the passing of the International Wizardry Act, which is like, okay, we should respect muggles too. Um, is Ooh. kind of in there. Yeah, uh, it's the most radical thing that's happened in the wizarding world. Right. To, to say that, no, elves are as good as wizards, and we should stop segregating elf kind and wizard kind. And I think what, if, if that kind of civil rights act passes in the wizarding world, let's imagine that Hermione gets it through <laughs> uh, as minister of magic, um, then uh, you would hopefully see that effect happen with goblins and with centaurs and so forth. Everyone has days where they're Slytherins, days where they're Gryffindors, days where they're Hufflepuffs and Ravenclaws, and we should be forced to decide. <laughs> okay, thank you, Benji. Thanks, I had a good time. We hope you did too. Please mention in the comments. We have a bunch of more Harry Potter videos coming up, so subscribe to not miss any of them. And I would like to thank our patrons for supporting our work. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Got Academy is sponsored by our patrons.